friends welcome to another video of zeta axis and today we will discuss about air mass and air fronts now to understand the concept of air mass let's take example of this land area where there are mountains there is a plain region and there is ocean now above the plain area the temperature and humidity would be mostly uniform because it is a plain region similarly above the oceans the humidity and temperature will be largely uniform but when we come to the mountains there will be vast difference in temperature and humidity between the peaks and the valleys now let's consider an air column lying over this region now if this air column is moving very slowly or if it is stationary then over some time it will acquire the properties of the region below it now if we assume that this is summer then our land area will be warmer than the oceans so in some time the air column above this plain area will become a little warmer while the air column above the oceans will become a little cooler and we can see that there is very uniform characteristics of temperature in this air column because it acquired its its characteristics from this plain region similarly this air column also has a very uniform characteristics of temperature and humidity because it acquired it from the oceans but when we come over here we can see that it does not have a uniform characteristics of temperature because the mountains itself has different temperatures all across it. in the valleys it is different in the peaks it is different therefore there is no uniformity in temperature over here as well as humidity is also not uniform in this air column so by definition an air mass is a large body of air which generally has uniform temperature and humidity so by this definition this can be called an air mass this can be called an air mass but this will not be called as an air mass because the temperature is not uniform in this air column now let's see how air mass is formed for formation of an air mass three things are must the air should be moving very slowly because if it is moving fast then the air will not have the time to acquire the properties of the source region or the region below it similarly there should be uniform temperature of the source region and there should be uniform humidity across the source region only then the air mass which is lying over that source region will acquire a uniform characteristics of temperature and humidity now if there is rain in one part of the source region and if it is a dry in another part of the source region then the air column in these two areas will not have similar properties so it will not form a continuous air mass therefore these three conditions are must for formation of an air mass now to further understand this concept let's focus on northern america where we can see that there are different types of source region we know that the, here there are deserts and therefore the air mass that is formed over here is hot here it is snow covered therefore the air mass that is formed over here is cooler if we move further north we see the arctic region where even colder air mass is formed if you look, look to the marine region we see in that the water in the tropics is little warmer therefore a warm air mass is formed and in the temperate region the water is cooler so we have a cool air mass so we can see that based on the characteristics specifically temperature and humidity of the source region that is the underlying region the air acquires the properties and if the air is stationary then it will form a large area of air which will have similar properties and this will be called as air mass now these air masses are also named based on their source region and their types so we can see here a naming for all these air masses now there are two alphabets for each air mass the first alphabet indicates the source region so m stands for marine and c for continental so if we have a c we can understand that this air mass was formed over a continental region if there is m then we can understand that this air mass was formed over a marine region similarly the second letter indicates the type of air mass a is for arctic or antarctic which means it is very cold p is for polar which is means that the air mass is cold and t is for tropical which means that the air mass is hot so this is how we name the air masses now let's try to understand what are fronts we will discuss the fronts in detail in another video but here we will be trying to develop a basic understanding of air fronts 
going back to our figure, we know that here we have a warm air mass and here we have a cooler air mass. Now, if this cooler air mass starts to move towards this warm air mass, the cold air will start to replace the warm air. And it is indicated by this blue line. You can see here that there is a blue line with triangles on it. The triangles point the direction of movement of the front. And remember, here, because cold air is replacing the warm air, therefore, we call it as cold front. Now, further, let's assume that this warm air mass, it starts to move northwards. So this is warm and this is cool. So this warm air will now start to replace the cooler air and we will see a warm front formation over here. And a warm front is indicated by this kind of line where we can see little semicircles on the line indicating the front. So these circles indicate the direction of movement of front. Now here, warm air is replacing cold air. Therefore, we call it as warm front. Now, there is also a third type of front which is called occluded front. And this front is formed when warm air is trapped between cold air masses. We can see here that there exists a warm front. That is the warm air mass is moving towards the cold air mass. And there exists a cold front where the cold air mass is moving towards the warm air mass. So, we have both a uh, warm front and a cold front and this warm air mass is trapped between these two cold air masses. Now as this movement continues, we will see that there will come a point when the air mass, that is the warm air mass will be completely lifted up in the air. The connection of this warm air mass from the ground will be removed and at this time we see formation of occluded front. The occluded front is represented by this kind of line where we see alternate triangles and semicircles indicating direction of movement. And here, the warm air mass has been lifted up and it is not connected to the ground. Therefore, we no longer call it as warm front. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, then please like and subscribe and share with our friends. We will be discussing about these fronts in detail in another video. So please watch it. We are going to prepare such kind of videos for all topics related to UPSC. So please subscribe and share this with your friends. Thank you.